Hey everyone, it's Travis and welcome back to a new episode of Home Course. Today we're in beautiful Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, home of the Honda Classic and the Treacherous Bear Trap, home of PGA of America's headquarters. And it's also home to 20 time PGA Tour champion and World Hall of Fame inductee, Greg Norman. Greg, also known as the Shark, has won 88 times worldwide, including two major championships. Greg has built quite the business empire post his golf career, something that few people in the world of sports have been able to accomplish. He has got a beautiful home here in Florida, including an amazing yacht. I can't wait to check it out and bring you guys with us. Let's go. And there's nothing like being in the shark's den. You know why people call him the shark? His playing style is just like a shark, smart, aggressive, and attacking life. And like most of the world's wealthiest people, he's got the same style when it comes to investing. He's involved in everything from leisure brands, to restaurants, to real estate. But as you can see, he also has a big eye for art, which makes sense. Contemporary art prices outpaced the S&P 500 by 164% from 1995 to 2021. And Deloitte estimates the total wealth held in art makes an increase by nearly $1 trillion by 2026. It's an investment that checks all the boxes for savvy investors, especially performance history and long-term growth potential. So what if you could invest in iconic paintings without needing to be as wealthy as people like Greg Norman? The good news, is now you can with Masterworks. This tech company valued at $1 billion analyzes over 60,000 data points to find financially attractive works and make them investable on their platform. Now you can diversify your portfolio with works by icons like Picasso, Warhol, and Banksy. In fact, they returned a net IRR of 30% from the sale of two paintings alone. This doesn't reflect the performance of future sales. No wonder over 325,000 people have signed up and here's the best part. You can get priority access to this revolutionary platform with the special PGA Memes link in the description of this video. Check out important disclosures at masterworks.io slash disclaimer. Hello. Greg, how's it going? Hey, Travis, how you doing, man? Hey, man, thanks for having us over. Come on in, come Let's on in. Check yeah. out your home. Yeah, that's my dog, Apollo. Hey, Apollo, he's how's like, it going? Uh, he's the most loyal. He's probably saying, oh, I'm not a camera person, but anyway. <laughs> you the star of the show. <laughs> well, beautiful home, I mean, this uh, entrance right here, walking into it, coming to this bar with this this view. Yeah, look, this is a, the, this is, my wife's done a, a tremendous job of pulling in. I sold my ranch and my house that I've ranch I have for 22 years, my house for 30 years. And I sold my ranch and the house. So this is a combination of ranch life, island life, and golf course life, <laughs> yeah. right? Put so yeah, she did, a, this was originally um, custom built for a house on Jupiter Island that we were renovating. And um, you yeah, know, it was just too much of a beautiful piece to do anything. And so this used to be when we bought the place was a family room, and you know, she said, you know, this is going to fit well in here because as soon as you walk in, you get that view oh, and you get this. And uh, quite honestly, um, this is where all the activity happens. Anyway. Yeah. So do you guys do quite a bit of entertaining then, have yeah. guests over all the time. We do. I mean, we we both like to probably entertain our friends maybe once a week, twice a week, something like that. And um, like last night, we had friends over that we hadn't seen my daughter and her husband and, and some people around so you know eight or ten people last night and and this is where it all happens and it all gravitates over there and then morphs out out to the back here so it's, yeah. it's pretty good social house so your wife's interior decorator yeah she does a really good job she used to uh, be um, doing a lot of work for hotels and um, some very very successful famous hotels all the way from Zurich to Cairo to London so but she accessorizes extremely well, as you can tell, you know, yeah. to, to, to put all this together. And she hasn't finished yet. I mean, she's probably 
80% done here, maybe. Yeah. So she's just going to accessorize a little bit more. No, it looks great. Yeah. I see this room here. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Over Mosey over there. All absolutely. these uh, amazing trophies. Um, so it's a bit of a fit, a bit of a history lesson for me. It's actually, you know, I was standing here the other night, somewhere right here, just leaning against the, this pillar. And my wife came up, Kiki says to me, what are you doing? And, she, and I was just staring at each and every one of them, right? Going through mm -hmm. shit, I remember this, I remember that, I remember this happening over here. And, and it was like a, a really emotional walk through, you know, 45 years of golf. I bet, yeah. yeah. And it was, uh, it actually got me and she just walked away and just left me here. Yeah. Yeah, and you get like, and, and sadly because, it, you know, I, I can't get them all out, but you know, you get the most important ones out. Oh, I mean, all these memories come back. I mean, you've won so many times. 88 wins worldwide, 20 on the PGA Tour, mm -hmm. two majors right there. Um, mm -hmm. Incredible. I mean, what a great career. Yeah, <laughs> no, it, been, it, it has been, Travis, really. Is. I mean, the two majors is probably the disappointment of my career. Yeah, you win a lot, but, you know, there's a lot of other majors I was close to, and some of it was my fault, some of it wasn't my fault, you know. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, the, the way the sport goes sometimes, but... Um, you know, when you do think, when I do look back on it, I think that my proudest moment, taking away all of this, is what I've done for the, the growth and development of the game of golf. I've been fiercely passionate about that. Whether it's whatever tour I played on, or whether it's through golf diplomacy, which is what I'd love to do today, mm -hmm. working with governments and using golf as a platform to open up hospitality and transportation and foreign direct investments and infrastructure and all that stuff. It's just, to me, it's just, it's a pleasure to be involved with that and pleasure to be involved with major corporations, big institutions that see golf as this incredible platform to open up the yeah. world to a new place. Yeah. What is, what trophy do you look at here and hold in regard as the most memorable or the most meaningful? Ooh, trophy? actually, you know what? Let me find it, let me find it. Let me find it. This one here. Canadian Open, it's a it's a bear, right? Uh -huh. And Jack Nicklaus never won the Canadian Open. Think about that. Of all the tournaments he won, <laughs> right? Never, okay. When we were when we were both entered the tournament, we saw this as the trophy, and I knew Jack wanted it because it's the bear, mm -hmm. right? So he wanted to win the Canadian Open. So he and I went toe to toe in that tournament, and I ended up beating him. <laughs> so it was just a just one of those moments in time where you knew he was more inspired because of the trophy than of course, yeah. the tournament, right? <laughs> so this one here has a, has a lot of history and memory for me. I love what you've done here, where, where you have these memories behind the trophies. That's really cool. Um, well, you know, that's what, that's your support team, right? Mm -hmm. Everything that happens behind here, there's a reason, right? I mean, this is the President's Cup. And look at that iconic photograph, right? It's just, it's just classic mm -hmm. um, down at Royal Melbourne. And that, you know, that's one of my, or is my favorite golf course in the world. So when you've got teaching these guys the line, I can even remember the hole and that, I, I think it's like the old fourth hole. Uh, but you telling the line to these guys, this is where you can hit it. Go over this, this um, tea tree right here and you're going to be able to do this. And, and that's, you know, those type of memories are fantastic. And yeah, you could sit here and tell story upon story. So let's talk yeah. about this real quick. So I oh, understand yeah. this is uh, something that your wife got for you on a birthday, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, correct. This is a bronze and it's a one and a half times size. And, um, you know, the whole process to do that, they came and put my body in, a, in an entire cast. And the only thing that they had open with my two nostrils and my eyes. <laughs> How right? long were you in that? I think 40 minutes, something like that. Wow. And I couldn't move. So the thing was got so hot. Oh, I, I bet. As it dried out. And uh, anyway, look, I think it's... I think it's unique. I've never had a bronze done on myself, and you know, I've, I've not many people who come into my house see it. So, uh, yeah, my wife did a, a a great job putting that together. So, with Live Golf, yeah, talk to us about this next venture. Obviously, there's been a lot of talk about it. Um, not much has been released this to this point, so a lot of people are kind of waiting to see what this next step is for Greg Norman. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm very intrigued to hear about it. I mean, what can you tell us about what you're working on? Well, I did, like I t touched on it before, just um, growing the game of golf across all platforms. And I, it's not just professional golf, it's across all platforms. It's not just men's golf, it's women's golf. It's, it's everything. Our CSR program, which is going to be enormous, right? Live Golf Investments have already invested about $270 million into the Asian Tour as a partner. Wow. 
because that was one of the places I grew up playing golf, right? And I'm still one of the biggest fans of Japanese golf. And look what Hideki Matsuyama did, right? Yeah, sure. He came through the Asian tour. Mm -hmm. And so he's absolute spike for the growth of the game of golf since winning the Masters has just been enormous. Yeah. So I always knew the Asian tour was a sleeping giant and it never had the avenue for um, a financial injection to grow. So that was my first initiative, to grow the game of golf through Asia. And you think about the, the, the amount of golfers and uh, tourism and everything that takes place in Asia, it's just, I think it's probably the second largest one uh, yeah. in the world. Yeah, it is. And then, you know, the work I've done with the Vietnamese government, you know, through my golf course design. Um, again, it's identifying what golf can do, and we touched on this. So Live Golf Investments is looking at that, and then look at the other investments that, uh, that we're connected to in some way, but it's not really under Live Golf Investments, is what's happening with the Aramco and the ladies golf, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And growing that side of things, and, and I'm actually working with my team now how to expand out on that, and we want to expand out of that. We have a, a single source investor, and that single source investor is extremely passionate about the game of golf, um, as is the country that he's, that he's the company's from. And to see what's happened over there in places like Saudi Arabia and the Middle East that I've been you know, very, very closely involved with for <clears throat> probably over a decade, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, through golf course design in Dubai, Oman, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, it's given me the the purview to see what's happening in that part of the world. It's not just Saudi Arabia, but it's all through the Middle Absolutely, East, yeah. right? Yeah. And I just love seeing that, right? <clears throat> and uh, and as I study it and I look at it, I see these opportunities that they're doing today. How do we expand on that? How do we grow that out? How do we how do we capture that? Uh, and when you look at the um, Arab Gulf. Um, Federation, it's 19 nations deep, right? And those 19 nations want golf to be a catalyst to, to grow that region. You go, this is so cool to be involved with this, you know, how we can actually do this and expand it out. So <clears throat> really, you know, Live Golf Investments and what I've done through all the other things in golf, whether it's playing or business or golf course design or what, has given me the, the lens to look through and about how to grow the game. So. As CEO and as commissioner of the new entity that we'll be launching soon, mm -hmm. um, as a player, as a former, as a guy who's built a brand from nothing, right, mm -hmm. on my own, um, who's a guy who owns his own company, and has, I've got 12 different divisions in my company, I, well, I was, it was an honor for me to be asked to get involved. Yeah, absolutely, right? about And um, so I've got the bit between my teeth and I'm going after it, Travis. <laughs> well, I mean, so those things that you just listed as a player, that's the kind of commissioner I think that you'd want to play for. I mean, that to me, I mean, because like obviously being in sports, there's a certain type of coach that you want to play for. Right. Someone who's maybe walked that walk and can relate to you at different levels and, mm -hmm. and be there for you as, when you're developing and or just have your back. So, I mean, with, with your history in the game and your upbringing in the game and what you've done in business, I don't know, I think that would be very attractive for people to want to come and be a part of that. <clears throat> well, look, that's very observant you and, and thank you for that because the answer to that is yes. Because the players I do speak to about the opportunity that lays ahead for them, <clears throat> I speak to them from a player's perspective. I speak to them of understanding what what their market value is today, which is really underutilized, yeah. compared to where their market value should be. Yeah. And I've been a staunch proponent of this for 40 years, staunch, because I've always said the players do not, we do not get, even though we've done well, right? We're successful and there's only a few of us who really take it to the next level, right? Yeah. Maybe a handful. <clears throat> it's the rest you got to think about. I'm, I'm fiercely protective of the players. I'm fiercely protective of our single source investment. I'm fiercely protective of the game of golf. And we're not out there to be disruptive or destroy. We're actually just want to be working side by side, shoulder to shoulder in the same sandbox for the benefit of the players, yeah. for the benefit of the, the fans and the stakeholders, even from a production standpoint. Um, so it's just, I'm not stopping. 
Yeah. Well, I can say that. <laughs> I, guess, I can tell, yeah, absolutely. You got a lot of work ahead of you. News is imminent of what's going to be coming of this, mm -hmm. this new league soon. And but it, it's going to be coming out soon. We're actually, you know, we each have day to day conversations, right? Yeah. And wh when is the timing right? When is the right timing, excuse me? And um, so it will happen. Yeah. You know, we aren't going anywhere. Um, and, you know, the, the players are independent contractors. They have a right to go and earn a living. Um, they, they have a right to be members of how many ever tours they want to be a yeah. member of, right? They have that right. Yeah. Um, and That's we're giving, the way, them, yeah. that, we're the giving them that platform. Yeah. So players are signed right now, mm -hmm. um, ready yes. to commit. Okay. Yeah, players well, are signed. Yeah, exciting times. That's the first time I've said that in front of a camera. Right. So. Well, exciting times. We can't wait yeah. to, to hear more. We won't press you any more questions okay. on it because <laughs> I know it's coming soon. So, all right, let's take a look. Yeah, absolutely. Stuff. All right, wow, this is incredible here. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, she so really knows what she's doing. Yeah, <laughs> this is the first room she actually worked on. This, this was kind of like a divided up kitchen room and... Yeah, we like the big open spaces and stuff like this. So this is a bit of a combination of stuff I've done in Africa and stuff I've done in Colorado. And, and quite honestly, she did an incredible job of merging all these different aspects, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so yeah, so from my perspective, um, this is our hangout joint. So surfing days behind you completely or you still get out there? No, I haven't surfed in a long time. Yeah. Uh, my son's a very good surfer now. He does a lot of, I mean, he just came back from, his honeymoon was down in the South Pacific and he was in a um, uh, cloud break down there, surfing double overheads, which is a beautiful barrel. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, he loves it. Walk us through this room here. This is pretty cool. So yeah, this is um, the finishing touches of the movie theater. Um, have not a whole lot's been done in here, except this section was just a, bit of a there was a bar area here an entertainment area my grandkids just love this room and they oh, yeah, play their air hockey and they do this and that and and this is where I do presentations you know when I have guests over and you know we sit here and talk through the presentations whatever we need to do and and I'll this is where I watch my football I don't watch golf in here but I watch my football American football I, I do I'm, okay. I, I'm a big NFL fan I enjoy it I know a lot of a lot of people who own a few uh, tour teams and mm -hmm. I love what the NFL has done and hey look there's a history lesson right between the yeah. AFC and the NF NFC right yeah, and they absolutely. formed to become the NFL hey <laughs> there's a lesson there right? There you go right <laughs> <laughs> absolutely history repeats itself let's take a look outside I'm dying to go check sure. this out <clears throat> So we call this our little Shangri-La pool, quite honestly. <laughs> but believe it or this not, is this is where I sit every morning about 4.35. I, I come out here and have my coffee, peaceful this would be. turn the fire on, yeah. sit out here and obviously the waterfall and all that stuff going and I walk you down there but the pool is obviously the one that everybody loves to come and talk about and awesome. you know, it's a great design, it's got a dive platform down the end, it's 14 feet deep down that end of the pool. Oh, uh, jacuzzi, fire pots, that's a fire pot down there, there. we're just getting a new pot for it. You do a lot of entertaining here at the pool at that bar area Yeah, as well? um, our kids do a lot of entertaining here, yeah. um, Kyra and Kelly do, they like their friends over here, so they'll do their barbecues and pizzas over yeah. there, and, and uh, they'll all hang around the pool here, and it's, it's cool, it's, I, I just love having <laughs> A place for the kids to enjoy themselves. Uh, I've come crash dad's house a lot too. We had this <laughs> pool, so. So yeah, this is a cool spot, and then the tennis courts over here. You know, we'll actually be playing tennis here this afternoon. And I love this setup here. Yeah, come on around. Yeah, it's that's, like that's pretty cool to see that. So yeah, yeah that uh, gives you a good view aspect of it. The, you know, we lay there, my wife and I, on yeah. Sunday afternoon, reading, reading material on the iPads or whatever you want to do and it's just chilling out so yeah what a great place to just relax and yeah Greg Norman one of the one things that you're known for is being in such good physical mm -hmm. shape uh, this was pretty cool to see so this is like an indoor outdoor it is space. this used to be the the pool guest house so it used to be a bedroom and stuff uh -huh. like that and then you know because I wanted to have my own gym this is all my original equipment um, so all these the whole room just opens up I'm actually redoing it when I, I leave to go overseas next week.
All right, so we passed this earlier, but I have to ask you. Um, oh, the, fla the, the flowers? No, <laughs> my eyes not there. What's the story behind this? Okay. <laughs> um, cool story, actually. Um, every two years, my wife and I go to somewhere in the world we've never been before. And we both traveled a lot, right? So this was a trip we did to Bhutan. And in Bhutan, they actually wor worship the penis. And off every house, it, the penis hangs off one corner of the house, and off the other corner of the house <laughs> hangs a sickle, right? Okay. So they, they, um, every temple you go into, it's uh, worshiping the, the uh, reproduction organ. You actually walk into the post office, mm -hmm. they're all lined around the top of the post office, all different sizes <laughs> and shapes. Is that? <laughs> it is crazy. <laughs> And everybody who comes in here, they look at it and they never want to talk about it. And they go, oh, what is this, Greg? What <laughs> well, I passed by it once and I was like, maybe I should ask him something, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> so yeah, it's a good talking piece. Yeah, so this is uh, where you get your real, real work done, huh? Yeah, this is my home office. Yeah, absolutely. I, I focus my attention here, um, spend a lot of time. We just opened up a new office in West Palm Beach um, and for, for the new company. Yeah. So, but this is where I principally did all my work and do all my work, quite honestly. And, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. It's quiet. It's good setting. And, you know, it's, my wife is finishing it off, to be honest with you. So it's not done yet. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a great place. I yeah. see these pictures here. And I, I've asked you this before, but you've been okay, able boy. to play with a lot of presidents in the past. Um, yeah. Any fun stories from any of those experiences or, or any of them just terrible golfers? Um, no, they're all actually passionate golfers. Are they? Okay. okay, what's the definition of terrible? We're all terrible. If I hit a bad shot, I'm terrible, right? But quite honestly, it, it again, getting back to what the game of golf has given me the opportunities to see and experience and spending time in the White House with this gentleman here, President Clinton, when he invited me up to be there. Um, just those things as an, as an Australian, mm -hmm. right? Um, not even a U.S. citizen having that opportunity to spend those times yeah. um, with them and walking around the building at two, three in the morning when nobody's there and he's telling you the story, just like what we're talking here now, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, to you know, you know, President Trump that I played golf with before he was president, mm -hmm. and um, to see the passion that he had for this country and has for this country. Um, you know, I'm not getting political here because each and every one of them have a personality, right? Yeah. And uh, the personality and the love for their country uh, is paramount. Mm -hmm. and, and Trump, I've never seen the stars and stripes flow through anybody else's veins as strong as what his have done. And so they're all different, you know, and um, so I've en enjoyed relationships. I, I would say, you asked me the question, I'd say President Bush 41. Yeah. He was my favorite go-to guy. Um, he was always open. He's, I could call him up if I had a question. He gave me great guidance on President Clinton, who I hadn't met before. And, and it was just one of the, he was very much a, the, the patriarch in a lot of ways. And um, I, I admired him as a president, but I admired him more as a human being. Really? And the way he's loved for the game of golf. and. He, He'd call me up and we'd go up to Kenny Bunkport and we'd play golf in an hour and 20 minutes, 18 holes. <laughs> like, How cool is gotta that? Gotta get it done, gotta get it done. And this here, there's two of them, right? Okay. Yeah. Feel the weight of that. Now what this is, it's a Maasai warrior's spear. A Maasai warrior uses this to kill this. <laughs> right? So think about this. So I spent some time in Tanzania, like three weeks. And um, so this is what they use. The one, one's a pointy end, right? Mm -hmm. And the other one is a slicing end, right? Then we button this down. This is a little sharper here. Mm -hmm. Now, why is it sharp? Because in my ranch in Colorado, I got this obsession about taking a mountain lion by hand spearing it. <laughs> Swear to God, I've tried a couple times and I, and I failed. Um, it's a, it's a bit of a quirky idea, but uh, my friend <laughs> of mine out of Tanzania came over and we started trying to do it. So what we do is we tree the lion. This is during hunting season. It's legal, right? You tree yeah. the lion and you got your dogs down below. So you climb the tree, then you got to hang on like this. And the lion is literally the tails right here and they're urinating all over you and they're hissing and this, this, this. The idea is to thrust it up into them as hard as you can. 
well, you know, it's not as easy as what it sounds, right? <laughs> so that was my... That is insane. That's one yeah. of the most insane things. So you were, that's insane that you were doing that. Yeah, my son and I were doing it. My son was down below. We, we, we had protection to a degree, but um, okay. yeah, so we wanted to try it. And, Let's say that's very dangerous. <laughs> uh, let's just say it was on the edge. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Thrill seeker there. That's an... Yeah, so that's a Maasai warrior spear. Greg, thank you for having us in your home. No, Absolutely you, beautiful, um, beautiful area. Your wife has done an amazing job putting this together. Um, thank you. Can't imagine much more what she can do, but this is unbelievable. But we have one last thing that I wanted to check out. Um, get this yacht that everyone wants to talk about and be on. I think we're, maybe I can uh, persuade you to go down to the Bahamas this weekend or something. But <laughs> actually, love to show it to you. You know, it's um, I grew up on the Great Barrier Reef. I've dived, scuba dived my whole life. My daughter's a master diver. But we can get in that when we, one of the reasons why I bought the boat. Yeah, let's go check it out. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go. Come aboard. All right, so here we are, Aussie Rules. So <laughs> Aussie Rules, yeah. This is, uh, what you say, you've had this, this newest version of Aussie Rules for Probably about seven, eight months now. Seven months, okay. That's about it, yeah. I wanted to have a multi-purpose boat, and this basically captures it all. We've got enough, you know, five staterooms on it. Um, it's a diving platform, it's a fishing platform. You can catch marlin off it, you can bottom fish off it. It's a tr great travel boat. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of an experiment, to be honest with you, Travis. Yeah. I'll tell you why, <laughs> because, you know, part of my overall goal that I mentioned it before about selling up everything, going back to Australia, I was using this as a test platform to see if I could ship it back to Australia and mm -hmm. keep it on the Great Barrier Reef. Yeah. Because it is a, it's an all-purpose boat that you can catch black marlin off it and you can do this and that. You know, it's a full beam stateroom, it's got plenty of his and her bathrooms. Um, yeah, so this is, um, you know, for my family, just for them to, my grandson, like I said, he loves to fish. You know, and if he wants to go out fish, he can go fish. You know, that's what it's all about and having your family around you. And I know you've got a couple of young kids. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and to see them grow up and be passionate about something that they can do fishing, you can do for the rest of your life, right? Yeah, Whether absolutely. it's salt water, fresh water, pelagics, whatever you want to do. Um, now that's the life right there, to provide those opportunities for your grandkids. I mean, you can't ask for anything better Exactly that, right, right. So. exactly so. This is another unique feature of this boat. It's an enclosed fly, fly bridge, and uh, this is the first time I've ever had a, a sport, fish, big sport fishing boat with enclosed fly bridge, and so it's a pretty cool feature and uh, makes life a little bit easier. And, yeah, I'd say this is incredible. Yeah, so you know it's got all the bells and whistles you need to understand what you want, and, and up on the bow, obviously the wave runners and the flats boat. Um, we have there Hell's Bay because I love flats fishing. Yeah, I'm a big fly fisherman and. So yeah, we head over to the Bahamas and you take everything with you, so it's pretty yeah. cool. How long does it take you to get to the Bahamas? Well, it depends. Um, Bahamas is only 43 miles away, mm -hmm. so we don't push this too hard. This boat can do 30 odd knots, but we never push it that hard. But we'll cruise it around 21, 22 knots, so two hours to get there. Okay. Pretty easy. Yeah. And uh, so I can run and operate it myself. It's you know, even though it looks like a big beast, it's actually got so much power. So it power. looks intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> it's got so much power, you can actually, you know, move it around pretty easily, but... Um, and you, like, you get, like, licensing to operate one of these, or...? Oh, look, you need a license to, to do it. Um, you know, I think it's a 200-ton license or something like that, okay. I'm not too sure. And then up top, there's a big tower that goes up top. We run, we, I run the boat off of that up there when we're looking for a certain fish. And, <laughs> yeah, a lot of work indeed. But you know, it's, it's again, I'm not a, a real materialistic guy, to be honest with you. Um, I just get the materialistic things that are the most practical for mm -hmm. the best use and for you're my family. A lot of use out of it, absolutely. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Well, Greg, I can't thank you enough for your time. I know you're a very busy man, man and yeah, you've got a lot no, of stuff going, you. but <laughs> your time has been very much appreciated. And no. thank you for joining us on this home course episode. And 
Well, looking forward to seeing the news break with uh, Live Golf and your new endeavor, and we'll go from there. Absolutely, and if you want to do another one right yeah. after that, yeah. maybe not with all this stuff. But yeah, I'm sure we'll be in touch. So. Uh, the, the formation <laughs> of a new entity. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate right. you. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate Thanks, it. Good luck with everything.